Good evening, Bozeman. Uh, Kent, uh, is a really funny guy. I'm not even lying about that. He's, uh, he's just a funny guy. <laughs> when, uh, Liar! <laughs> okay, I guess we better get started. Uh, all right, let me ask you this. Do you have something that's been hanging out on your bucket list for about two decades and hasn't seen any action? Anybody have any goals like that? A couple? Okay, me too, me too. So uh, that's why I was really thrilled when the Big Sky Wind Drinkers hired me to shoot the 2002 Ridge Run from a helicopter. You guys heard about this race? Yeah, it's, uh, it's regarded as one of the most grueling trail runs in America with 7,000 feet of climb, 9,000 feet of downhill, spanning 20 miles. As we flew along the ridge at 9 a.m., I saw these little people running on the ground who had already run halfway across the bridges. And I just got thinking to myself, wow, these people really know how to seize the day. At 9 o'clock in the morning, they've already gone from there to there. And the next year, I hiked the ridge and shot more race video from the ground. And that day was when I decided I was going to either walk or run this race by the time I was 50. That would give me about 17 years to, to train for it, so that was good. <laughs> Eight years later, Montana PBS hired me to shoot footage of Nikki Kimball for the documentary Finding Traction. And that's going to be, yeah. It, uh, it really inspired me. It actually uh, got me thinking about running, and so I, I, I started running at the Huffing for Stuffing race. Uh, we probably had a couple of people here run that. It's a great race. Um, so it was uh, my, my friend uh, Bill and I, Bill's here tonight, we were running. He, he lives down the street from me, and we started running these races. We ran some 5Ks, we ran a 10K, and eventually our first half marathon at the run of the pub. Uh, and that was last spring, and that, was, that, that felt like a long way to run. But uh, at the end of that, we, we fin barely finished that, and Bill has this crazy idea that uh, maybe we should sign up for the Ridge Run lottery. And I said, well, I think we should wait a year. But Bill said, no, we got to do it now. We might not have another shot, you know. So, so we, uh, we put our names in, and <clears throat> on this uh, website, um, basically, you, they can only accommodate uh, one out of two runners that enters. And so we were really surprised when we actually made it in, both of us. And so we're like, now what do we do? So <laughs> we, uh, we started training. We ran into my friend Dave at the uh, Jim Bridger Ridge Run, or Jim Bridger Trail Run, I should say. And he took us up from uh, Bridger Bowl to the M, and then from uh, just, we basically covered the whole ridge in two different pieces, so it was, uh, it was pretty interesting, and I was really hungry at the end of that, that, uh, <laughs> that race. Uh, one morning, a tribe of mountain goats walked with us most of the way up Sacagawea Peak. Uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. In July, Eric Bendick created a Kickstarter to fund a new ridge run film. And he raised $12,000 to make it possible. And, and 10 of the runners out of the 250 were going to be able to carry uh, GoPros. And I got, actually got a chance to carry one, so I was really excited. I uh, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to finish the race, but heck, I'll, I'll carry a camera. Uh, <laughs> on August 9th, the race day, I woke up at 4 o'clock and drove the Dark Canyon with my buddies. I uh, was really nervous. 20 miles is a lot of exposure. I didn't know if I brought enough clothes, water, or calories. And I just uh, got, got into the adrenaline of, of the runners. The, the horn went off, and we were off running down the trail. So these are stills from the GoPro. Eric asked us to kind of hold the GoPro out about arm's length uh, so that we could see our surroundings and ourselves. And it was kind of weird uh, doing selfies of ourselves for 20 miles, but, but we got used to it. Uh, being part of the Bozeman running community is like whitewater rafting. Uh, basically, as long as you stay in the boat, they will always keep you moving toward your goals. And it's almost like uh, you know, being on uh, cruise control. But it's, it's a lot harder. Uh, <laughs> So uh, after Ross is this massive climb called the Wall, and I, I got about halfway up here. We're looking north uh, towards Ross Peak there, and I got about halfway up, and I, I wasn't sure if I was going to finish. I mean, when you're running for time, it's really different than just hiking. And, uh, 
but I had to shut off my mind because my sh- mind was co- trying to get me to, to quit halfway and uh, tell me a lot of stuff about myself that uh, I had to, had to get over. So I was coming up on Bridger Bowl, which is the halfway point of the race. You can kind of see the top of Bridger Bowl there. Um, if you don't make the 11.30 cutoff, you have to go down the hill. They won't let you finish the race. And it's actually the last place that you could go down. So I didn't want to end up with just a half a story on the GoPro, so I kept going. And uh, climbing Saddle Peak, I was moving pretty slowly. I was sipping water to stay hydrated. The view was just breathtaking. And I just took a couple of moments just to kind of do a 360 and just, wow, I'm really, really doing my, my dream here. It's amazing. So... <clears throat> So yeah, I, my hip was kind of hurting here by Baldy, and I, I stretched a little bit, got some water, called my wife, told her I'll meet, meet you at the, the finish line, and by the time I left, I was feeling pretty good. The descent from there is basically a controlled slide down a rocky trail <clears throat> for about five miles. Uh, when you get out of control, like in a place like this, uh, I would uh, basically take it slow until things leveled out. <clears throat> And in the final five miles, it takes all your focus just to make sure that, that your feet are landing in the right place. Does anybody recognize this trail above the M? I, I thought I would, but by the time I got here, I, I missed the M. I, I didn't know where I was, but I heard, uh, heard some cowbells, so I just kept going toward the cowbells. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget how happy I was seeing my family at the end of the race. They didn't think I was going to make it, and I wasn't sure I would either. <clears throat> My time was 7 hours and 50 minutes, and it placed 155th. Woo! <laughs> and best of all, I got to eat a really big cheeseburger, so that was good. So, uh, I wanted to sum up what I learned from the uh, Big Sky Wind Drinkers, and maybe it'll be helpful in some of your bucket list goals. One is find a partner who shares your goal, get a commitment uh, on the calendar, ignore your mind when it says to quit, and seize the day. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.